Welcome back. A Nebraska native is putting the run in Runza. Now, if you've been traveling anywhere between Shadron and Scottsbluff this past month, there's a chance you've seen Micah Meyer running south on Highway 71 to promote his platform. A year ago, I actually launched this new program called the Outside Safe Space, which is the pin that I'm wearing and the symbol you see on this water bottle, which is essentially meant to help encourage people to make outdoor and rural spaces more welcoming to LGBTQ plus people. Traditionally, these are places that are outside of those places you'd expect people to be welcoming. So the idea is to try to change the narrative. So I launched this new Outside Safe Space program by running across Minnesota, where I currently live. And then this past February, I ran across Mississippi and uh, decided it was time to bring it home, to bring it to my home state and show off one of the most beautiful parts of our state. You know, as a travel writer, so many people don't know how incredible Western Nebraska is. So as, as somebody who works in travel, it was really important for me to show off my home state. And as a gay Nebraskan, it was important for me to show LGBTQ youth that they can grow up to be professional athletes, adventurers, and world record setters. Micah says running became his outlet due in part to the lockdown during the 2020 pandemic. Well, so before I started all these runs, I set a world record visiting all of America's 419 National Park Service sites, including Scotts Bluff National Monument and Agate Fossil Beds National Monument. And I learned from that that we can use epic adventures to sort of talk about important issues, which is what I'm doing now with this, what I call adventure advocacy. And during the pandemic, when we were in lockdown, uh, my governor said, you're allowed to leave your apartment if you can work out six feet away from other people. And I thought, well, that's pretty much just running uh, outside, they said as well. So. Really running for me became a way to sort of stay sane during the pandemic and then I figured out I could integrate it into my job and so it just became a fun way to do something that I love and help other people in the process. I also think it's really important, you know, I grew up and my only concept of gay people was drag queens or the butt of the joke on TV shows. So I want to show people that gay men are super athletic and we can do incredible tasks and feats that people don't always think we can. So the running really comes in and that I want to show kids basically the role model that I never had growing up, a, a very athletic, adventurous gay man who's out there living an incredible life, showing people that they can be not just ordinary, but also extraordinary. He says growing up in Nebraska, it was not easy for him to show his true colors. Yeah, mostly. So my dad was the campus pastor at the University of Nebraska Lincoln Lutheran Student Center, which at one point was the largest Lutheran campus ministry in America. So I really grew up in the church and sort of this culture, this idea that being gay was wrong and that it was something wrong with me and that I could fix by praying it away. So I spent over half my life believing that. And it wasn't until I moved away until I went to a much bigger city and got to know a lot of people who were more accepting than where I grew up that I was able to come out myself. So for me and many LGBTQ plus people, we sort of go to these big urban bubbles and that's where we feel safe to be ourselves. And when we get out to outdoors places, rural places, uh, the culture makes us feel like we're not as welcome. And the reactions Micah gets running through communities varies greatly. You know, it's been really interesting. Sometimes I wear a unicorn onesie, sometimes I'm wearing rainbow tutus, um, sometimes I really wear some fun outfits just to make this enjoyable. And it's interesting, uh, four miles into my run across Minnesota, somebody drove past me in a truck and yelled a gay slur at me. All I was doing was running. It was, it was sort of shocking for a state that's known as Minnesota nice. So then I asked my social media followers, I said, what's the most homophobic state in America? Where's the place that needs this the most? And they voted Mississippi. So I went to Mississippi, and had some similar experiences where people sort of found out that part of me and suddenly they were a lot less welcoming or suddenly they didn't want my camera person there taking photos. And so it, I saw the way that they changed. I spoke at a Rotary Club and the first half of the talk all I talked about was national parks and my dad being a minister inspiring me to travel through his early passing from cancer and the second I said I was gay half of them put their heads down and looked at their phones the rest of the talk. So. It certainly is different. I mean, I ran through Scotts Bluff on Sunday and somebody drove by and yelled that same gay slur at me while just running down the street. I actually wasn't even wearing anything rainbow that day. It was, it was a coincidence that I'd forgot. So for all intents and purposes, I looked like a straight man just running down the road and somebody decided to go by in a truck and yell a gay slur at me. So it's sort of stuff like that that's frustrating, but also shows me how important the work I'm doing is and how stuff like this really is needed and can help show kids a role model that they don't see otherwise and, and let them know that somebody out there loves them and they can grow up to do anything. He says despite some bigotry, there's been positive feedback as well. Totally. I Actually, one of the reasons I'm in Nebraska, aside from showing off the beauty here, is that when I was running across Mississippi, so many people sent me messages and said, you just ran through my hometown yesterday. 
and I left that place 20 years ago because I felt like I couldn't be who I was there and I realized I still carry so much of that with me but seeing you run through proudly as yourself makes me feel like I need to live more out loud as my authentic self and so part of being in Nebraska for me is is sort of reclaiming it for childhood Micah who was in the closet the whole time I lived here and sort of running across the state now as a proud out successful professional athlete gay man and and getting to share that so it's been cool like uh, I've met people along the way who said you know I probably don't agree with your politics I don't understand why you want to live in a big city but my daughter has special needs and people make fun of her every time we leave the house and I know what it feels like to have people look down on you for something you didn't choose so I hope people listen to you and I hope you make it across the state so it's moments like that where you connect with people on a, on a level of shared humanity that that the media and and politics tells us we shouldn't have in common and it's one of the reasons why I'm here in Nebraska because I'm a Nebraskan I grew up in the state I am a corn-fed adventurer out there setting world records but Nebraska is always part of me and I'm always part of it so to be able to show people somebody from a flyover state doing something incredible and living proudly that's what means so much to me and this run across Nebraska is being sponsored by Runza and Micah says it's no coincidence It was so perfect. So I was trying to figure out where I would run next, and these projects take a lot of financial support. And so uh, I had Michigan reaching out saying, hey, we'll help you out if you come here. Wisconsin had the same thing, but I really wanted to come to Nebraska. So I reached out to a bunch of Nebraska-only brands. Obviously, Runza made the most sense because the word run is in the brand. And it's just such an iconic Nebraska brand that it was honestly the first one I thought of. So I'm super thankful. I reached out to Runza and I said, hey, I'd much rather come to Nebraska than Michigan. Can you help me make this possible? And they said, totally. And so it's because of Runza, actually, that I'm able to run across Nebraska and not some other state. And after stopping in Scottsbluff this past Wednesday, Micah will be running south on Highway 71 through Kimball and to the Colorado state line. I have a bunch of Runza free combo gift cards, and if people see me running, they can wave me down and flag me, and I will hand them one. So if you see me out on the highway headed south, wave me down. I've got a gift card for you. And uh, if you want to see this entire journey from its beginning to end, you can go to my Instagram or Facebook and see photos from the entirety of Nebraska. I hope I've shown it off well. One of the things that's been so amazing about this journey is hearing from people around the world who said, I'm going to visit western Nebraska now. I had no idea it was so beautiful. I'm going to go there. So hopefully you'll see a lot of people here soon, and maybe they'll come and eat this runza, and hopefully they'll say, hey, I'm here because I saw it on Micah's Instagram. And after he wraps up his run through the panhandle, Micah's journey will take him to the Big Apple. Sort of last minute, one of my other sponsors, Michelob Ultra, they reached out and they said, hey, we have a bib for you to run the New York City Marathon. And I said, well, I've never run one before, but if I can meet Serena Williams, I'm there. So uh, I have integrated training for my first marathon into my run across Nebraska. So when I started at the, at the northern end of the state, I did 13.1 miles. The next Sunday, I did 15.5. Last Sunday, I did 18. And this coming Sunday, I'll do 21, which will be my last building run before the actual marathon in New York on November 7th. In Scotch Bluff, Ryan Murphy, KMEB.TV News.